be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you our hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may both love you and really magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please receive the hearing of God's holy word. A reading from the first book of Kings, chapter 19. Pardon me. It's a reading from the second book of Kings, chapter 2. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. When Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went, and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up, and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, 
Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. He picked up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. He took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water, saying, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? When he had struck the water, the water was parted to one side and to the other, and Elisha went over. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading Psalm 77 by half verse. I will cry aloud to God. In the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. I will remember the works of the Lord. I will meditate <coughs> on all your acts. Your way, O God, is holy. Who is so great a God as our God? You are the God who works wonders. And has declared your power among the peoples. By your strength, you have redeemed your people. The children of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw you, O God. The waters saw you and trembled. The very depths were shaken. The clouds poured out water. The skies thundered. Your arrows flashed to and fro. The sound of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightnings lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was in the sea, and your paths in the great waters. Yet your footsteps were not seen. You led your people like a flock. By the hand of Moses and Aaron. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Galatians. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment you shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious, fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I have warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Jesus Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, to, they entered the village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but they did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the season where it all turns green. Do you know that green is the second most favored color in the world? What do you think number one is? What do you think? Blue. Blue. It's actually blue. There you go. It's actually blue. It's the color blue. So if you blue fans are out there, your color is number one. Congratulations. But green, green does come in as a close second. According to color expert Kate Smith, the presence of green has an effect upon the human body. It stimulates certain glands in the brain, relaxes the muscles, and can even, even decrease allergy symptoms. So there you go. It paradoxically both calms you down by relieving stress, but at the same time reinvigorating you. So when the priest says that it's actually healthy to come to church, we are not lying. We're not lying, especially in the green season. The color green can make you smarter as well. Studies have shown that being in the presence of green can lead to a greater reading ability and even creativity. Green is associated with money, as we all know, the environment, aliens, and uh, also Hong Kong. Get moving. It just turned green, stupid. And patience is probably the best way to summarize that one. And I must confess, sometimes I'm very impatient. Green is the natural color of progress. So if you see it on the stoplight, again, please, let's get moving. Let's go. Well, I must admit that green is at times used to connotate uh, physical sickness as one can get green around the gills, or spiritual sickness, as one can get green with envy, or even emotional sickness, when one realizes the grass is greener on the other side. The color green is commonly thought of as something actually quite positive. It's progress, yes, but taken with spiritual significance, it's probably best described as revitalizing growth. That, of course, is the reason why it is used in this season. Why? Because each liturgical year, always we see a, a rebirth. We see Jesus come as the infant born in a manger, as we see at Christmas time. We see both the joy in his life as he preaches and teaches and heals, but we also see the horror 
as his life is cut short. We see the triumph over death in our celebration of Easter. And we see how the church is formed at Pentecost as the Holy Spirit descends and forms and shapes that very first church. That's rebirth. But now in all these Sundays after Pentecost, and there are a lot of Sundays after Pentecost, Pentecost tide, and this whole season that we call the ordinary season, it's time for that rebirth to take hold in growth. It's time for the seeds that have been planted and watered to produce. And this is what our gospel lesson is getting at uh, this morning. The disciples have walked the road with Jesus for quite some time now. They have seen him bear the cost of his discipleship. Now it's time for the masterful teacher to turn the tables. What about your discipleship? What about you, disciples? Do you understand the cost of discipleship? Is growth in discipleship just another way of exerting power in this world so that you get what you want? I mean, coming into a village of Samaritans, for example, and not being welcomed. How do you respond to that? Well, the disciples had a rather interesting uh, suggestion, a rather interesting strategy. We might want to call the, uh, the kill them all strategy. Good Lord. Jesus uses that response as an opportunity to rebuke the disciples, to chastise them for the lack of understanding the mission. Then a second situation occurs when somebody boldly claims that I'll follow you, Jesus, wherever you go. That wherever is, of course, the place of poverty, where Jesus lacked a home. Because he's placed himself even lower than those foxes who have their holes and those birds of the air that have their nests. They have their homes, but not Jesus. He has no place to lay his head. The final two situations happen when Jesus commands on separate occasions for folks to follow him. He calls on these two people to deepen their commitment for the mission at hand. And though they are both willing, they are willing, their wills are infected by what we might call that rather interesting disease, the my time disease. I'll do it, Jesus, but it has to be on my time. I dictate my time to you, you see. And as long as you work around my prescribed schedule, then I can fit you in. You see, Jesus, I have commitments back home that I need to get to. But when it's convenient for me, I'm all yours. It's a reaction to all four of these stories, I believe, that Luke, the gospel writer, uses and inserts here one of Jesus' favorite images. The one who puts their hand to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. And when you put your hand to the plow, you're, you're making a commitment. You're doing so because you need to get the soil ready for the planting of the seeds. Seeds that will grow and put food on the table for your family. And again, when you do that, that is making a commitment. A commitment to finish the job. If you turn back, if you get distracted, you're going to make a mess of that job. I know one of our younger folks, uh, I think of Noah, right? You're, you're cutting lawns for the summer, right? Cutting lawns. You put your hand to the lawnmower, but you turn back, what's going to happen? It's going to get all messed up. That job's going to get all screwed up. Screwy lines. It won't look very good. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Once you put your hand down, you make a commitment to finish the job. And it proves something. It proves that when you put your hands to that plow and you turn back, or that hand to the lawnmower and you turn back, it, it shows that you are not fit for this job. That you're too easily distracted to do what's necessary to provide for you and for your family. The family that Jesus speaks of, of course, is the kingdom of God. No one who puts a hand to following after God 
is worthy if they turn back, if they become distracted, because they truly believe that the grass is greener on the other side. Jesus is basically saying, if you believe that, if you think the grass is green on the other side, then go to the other side. Don't commit toward walking toward and producing in the kingdom of God. That's the hard truth that Jesus here is trying to say. That we are called by him to be all in. All in. To be willing to di discipline ourselves. To be willing to sacrifice. To be willing to put the Lord over all the things that I want. And all this is possible only if you find your true satisfaction in God alone. Your walk with him must come first before all earthly things. That's the Christian answer to a satisfied life. All those other folks with their different philosophies, they have different answers. That's the Christian answer. The Christian answer is to seek after God. To put your hand on that plow and never look back. We're led by the Holy Spirit, the Apostle Paul. Helpfully, I think, puts the meat on that bone. On the surface, it might seem as if Jesus and Paul don't agree. Not true. But it seems like they might not agree here. The Messiah, for example, was saying that you are called to follow me. In other words, you belong to me. The apostle, though, Apostle Paul here, he's speaking, he's uh, talking, he's talking freedom. He likes the freedom talk. You were are, you are called to freedom, he says, because Christ has set you free. Now that sounds like just the kind of right message as we head into this coming weekend in the celebration of our nation's independence. I mean, more of this kind of talk, and we'll be waving our flags and munching our freedom fries. It's the kind of talk that we as Americans, we like to hear. Freedom. Don't submit yourself to the yoke of slavery. Rebel. Free yourself from tyranny. We don't have to go very far to figure out that Paul here is using the word freedom much differently. Because the idea of freedom is like a slippery screw that's useless unless it's attached to something. The object makes the difference. We are free, we are only free, when we are in Christ. When we are following him. When our hand is firmly on the plow. Following Christ makes you free. Free to become slaves for one another through love. In other words, we are free from the law so that we might fulfill the law even more completely. And the love that we show our neighbor, we choose to love that person as much as we love ourselves. Free to live by the Spirit. What does that mean? I'm glad you ask. It's producing fruit. Producing fruit. The fruit of the Spirit. Notice that it's singular. Go back to the original Greek if you want to. And you'll see. There's no problem here with this translation. It is supposed to be singular. The word fruit is singular. It's not fruits of the Spirit. It is fruit of the Spirit. And there's only one fruit, and that fruit is love. Then that fruit is described, that fruit of love is described in eight different ways. It's the love of expressing joy. It's the love of spreading peace. It's the love of being patient, even at the stoplight. It's the love of being patient, even when the other person does not deserve it. It's the love of being kind. It's a love of being generous with the gifts that God has given to you. Realizing, of course, that they're all, they all came from the hand of God. It's a love of staying faithful, even when it may cost you something. It's the love of being gentle. It's the love of controlling and disciplining yourself so that you can look beyond yourself. Beyond yourself, excuse me. I got choked up there. <clears throat> That'd be kind of hard for me, I'm not sure. Woo, get coughed up. There you go. Uh, the love of controlling and disciplining yourself so that you can look beyond yourself 
and actually see other people and serve other people. So we are free to love. As a Jesus follower, you are led by the Holy Spirit. And that makes you free. Now there is some certain nuances to following Christ. I'm going to give you one illustration here right now. We have our rights and we have our wrongs. We have a narrow way, we have a broad way. The Ten Commandments, for example, provide us with a certain uh, moral roadmap in which it is revealed that certain things are wrong. It is wrong to commit adultery. It is wrong to covet. It is wrong to lie. Though, if you live in a certain context, so let's say a context of a murderous despot, and you choose the high precious people in your home that surely would be killed if you don't, I certainly hope, I certainly hope that when the authorities arrive at your doorstep, you don't just blurt out the truth. Yeah, yeah, actually, they're right there, right under the floorboard, you know, they're right in there. And you see, that leads us to maybe a more nuanced way of understanding what it means to be led by the Spirit, to, be, to live in the Spirit. It means that you always seek the good. You always seek the good. You always seek the God who is good. Speaking on truths may be more righteous in certain contexts than living by a law that absolutely forbids it. Speaking an untruth to save a person's life is very different than speaking an untruth because you can't face the fact that you lost an election, for example. The moral question to be asked because you're speaking on truths, seek the good, or does it merely seek your own comfort? Saving lives is the good, and it's supremely godly. Merely pleasing yourself, merely protecting yourself, is not. Putting your hand on a plow and falling after Christ will lead you into some rocky terrain into some very tricky circumstances. Think about it. It has to. The one that you are following is a masterful teacher. And there's no better schoolroom than the circumstances of life. But a Christian approach to life doesn't demand that you turn off your brain and that you follow some prescribed moral code. It's being committed to every single day and in every single situation that you're faced in life that you seek the good, that you seek after God's own will. And if you live by the Spirit, then also be guided by the Spirit. If you seek the good, let us also be guided by the good. And the good is the beautiful God that we love and adore. So live your life in freedom, choosing Choosing to please and honor him. And it'll be a life worth living. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let's continue our worship service by standing. Let us continue to adore and love our God as we reaffirm our faith in the words of I see in Creed, found on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God,
The prayers of the people, form six, right two, is found in the Book of Common Prayer, page 292. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, families friends, friends, and neighbors, and, neighbors, and for those who are all. We pray for Joe, our president, Kevin, our mayor, Bria, or I'm sorry, Kevin, our governor, Bria, our mayor, and for this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, and justice. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friends, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Paulson, our bishop, James, our rector, James, our deacon, Edward, Robert, Wallace, and Stephen, bishops retired, Jack, Kay, and Dwight, clergy retired. We pray for our lay ministers, especially Olivia, Emma, Mary, and Kathy, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who, who serve God in his, his church. church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, we pray for those who are ill or recovering. J.L., Mary, Leo, David, Betsy, Evelyn, Barb, Vincent, Reggie, Jonah, Lindsay, Bill, Clois, Kathy, Jim, Steve, Betsy, Kenny, Craig, Donna. We pray for those who are in nursing care. Mike, Lavinia, Kay, Stuart, Betty Ruth, Christopher. We pray for all members of the armed forces. Riley, Andrew, Tyler, Lane, Brandon, Gina. We pray for those in need, sorrow, or adversity, or other special circumstances. Olive, Nina, Kathy, Vicki, Bobby, Catherine. And in the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Basil's, Talequa, Redeemer, Akmolgi, St. Crispin's Summer Camp, Barito Othonal Work Project, Diocese of Uruguay. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We offer special thanksgiving for the ordination of Sarah Smith to the sacred order of priests. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. We pray especially for Anne. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. And now on page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have done, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors and ourselves. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us.
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Peace, Lord, be always with you. And also with you. Amen. All right, well, thank you so much for being here. You may be seated on this, the third Sunday of Pentecost Tide. So glad to have everyone with us this morning. And again, also a very uh, privilege to have with us this morning on the keyboard up there in our choir loft is Richard Job. So thank you so very much for being with us. So I found fantastic playing uh, this morning. Olivia is on vacation, so we uh, pray for her as she has a very relaxing vacation and uh, relax up a little bit and come back to be with us. I also want to thank some other folks too. Um, again, as we've said, our roof is, again, we're making some progress. Our workers are doing a fantastic job. So please be praying for our workers as well, that everything will go very safe and smooth uh, for them as they're working in extreme, of course, heat and conditions. And they're just doing a fantastic job. And so we're so thankful for the work and the labor uh, that is being done right now on our roof. That also means we have some labor that's happening inside of our nave. And so I just want to give a shout out to the Altar Guild, uh, Greg and Macklin Taylor uh, specifically, as well as uh, Colby and our tremendous cleaning crew. They did a fantastic job getting our nave and worship uh, 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 area space uh, ready uh, this morning. And so I want to thank them very, very much for their hard work and tremendous job doing that yesterday. All right, looks like we have an announcement by Emma. So we'll have Emma come forward at this time. Good morning, I have two announcements. First one is if you are in high school or know somebody in high school, Wednesday evening at 6.30 we'll be meeting here and we'll go to an escape room and then we'll come back and have a lock-in. Um, if you can only come part of the time, that's fine. If you can only come for dinner, that's fine. If you can only come to the escape room, that's fine. Just let me know um, and we will work it out. I know it's a weekday, so if you need transportation, let me know. We can also work that out because I don't work in the summer, so I got time. Um, if you are in middle school, the next week on July 7th, we'll be meeting here at 11 and going up to Riversport. So if you are rising middle school and rising high school, so if you're going into 6th, 7th, or 8th, and then going into 9th, 10th, 11th, or 12th. If you have any more questions, let me know. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Emma. Yeah, good, good luck in the escape room. Well, no, no, one of those one time, you have to be very smart to get through that. So I was not very smart. So hope the kids are. Yes. Uh, just a few announcements on our weekday services. Uh, again, we uh, have weekday services here at St. John's on Tuesday mornings at 10 o'clock, Holy Eucharist throughout the summer, fantastic, and then Wednesday evenings at 6 p.m. And both those services uh, throughout the entire summer are going to move, of course, in here, up in the Chancel Pews. That's where we'll have these services, and we'll kind of shut down our chapel for the summer as we're still processing things, some things through uh, with our Shine School. So we'll take some time with that. The only exception to that is this Wednesday, at 6 p.m. we will not have service. Uh, we'll skip one Wednesday and we'll resume the following Wednesday. I also want to remind you too of our memorial service. We have a memorial service as well. And that happens at 12, I think it's 12.05, maybe it's 12.10. It's a little bit after 12, afternoon. On the first Wednesdays of each month. Now we were doing on the second Wednesdays of each month. We're gonna revert back to St. John's tradition, bless God. We're going back and we're gonna put it back at the first Wednesday of every single month it's a fantastic little service. We do Holy Communion, but before we do that, we pray and remember those folks that we lost in that given year, as well as those folks we lost in that given month. Um, and so it's really a fantastic time, uh, time of remembrance, and that's part of what we are, our responsibility 
here as uh, the local church. You can see our rest of our announcements there in our bulletin insert. Again, I just want to highlight the VBS helpers. Again, you can see our dates for VBS. I'll probably be uh, writing some individual, not individual, but uh, some group emails targeting some different groups in our church. I really want to see folks come and help us out with these lunches uh, during vacation Bible school. And so again, Kathy Wilson can uh, give you more information about that. So VBS coming up July 18th through the 22nd. All right. Any birthdays, anniversaries, spiritual anniversaries? Anybody going to camp? And I believe we also have an ordination um, blessing as well. All right. So you have a have a birthday. Aaron's got a birthday. Ordination anniversary. All right. So let's first we'll do our birthdays. That's found on page 830. It's prayer 51. We love for folks to pray along with us. So now let us pray. Watch over the child, O Lord, as their days increase. Blessing guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up when they fall. And in their hearts have a peace past understanding. Abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And on this birthday, I bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And on the, your birthday, I bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. What day was your birthday? It's on July 2nd, which is this coming Saturday. I got it. Yes. Fantastic. Well, happy birthday to you. And for Emma? July 2nd, too. Oh, that's right. That's right. Both on this Saturday. So happy birthday to both of you. All right. Yes, a round of applause. There you go. And now for the ordination blessing. Shit, ordination blessing. There. Let me do that. And now let us pray. Father, we thank you and praise you for all that you've done for us. And we thank you so very much, Lord, for the gift of deacons. And we thank you, Lord, for the diaconate, the way that the, uh, these ministers uh, serve and please you, Lord, inside your church, but also look to outside the church and bringing people in and serving the poor and serving the community. We thank you so very much for the ordination, Lord, of Deacon James, and we just celebrate with him on this anniversary of his ordination. We thank you so much for all that he means to us here at St. John's and for all the uh, different tasks, Lord, that he accomplishes. We pray, Lord, in this coming year that we will give him the strength and the discernment, Lord, in his uh, wonderful ministry of being a deacon here at St. John's. And so on this anniversary of your ordination, I bless you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Yeah, yeah. I should know this. What is the actual day? Uh, Thursday. This Thursday. All right. This Thursday, Deacon James was ordained anniversary. That is wonderful. We have one final announcement this morning. This announcement would have been made by Holly Cole, our senior warden, but she's not feeling so well today, and so uh, I'm going to uh, take up the mantle. I won't do as good a job, obviously, but I'm going to do my best. It's basically uh, uh, letting you know about a recent vestry decision. A vestry decision was made at the vestry retreat and also bled over a little bit into this uh, past uh, Monday's meeting as well. It's basically a threefold decision the vestry has approved at this point. There's more details to come, obviously. Uh, but the first uh, part of that is that we've uh, decided to go ahead and uh, tear down our uh, rental properties here on the east side of our campus. We have three different houses. We've already torn down one recently, uh, about a year ago. We're going to tear down the other three as well. Uh, basically what this does is this transitions us out of the rental house business, and it will trans transition us into the parking business for that sort of outside external uh, revenue stream, if you will, we will replace it. Uh, and so we will have the construction of a new parking lot uh, that will take place on the south uh, east side over here. And what that will do is give us more parking, obviously, for our services on Sunday. But it will also give us the opportunity uh, to be able to rent out different uh, parking stalls. And that will be the other sort of revenue stream into the church. 
On the north side, the northeast side, again, we, have, we don't have the plans sort of in place as of yet. And that, of course, leads to the most important part, I think, of this announcement, uh, which is that we'll have a vestry subcommittee meeting together over the summer, also into the fall as well. And they'll be making some decisions about how that so whole sort of east side is going to be developed. And so obviously we knew the parking lot's part of that, but what else gets placed alongside that is, uh, is still some open questions. And so that subcommittee will be, uh, will be deliberating and doing a really fantastic job, and so I thank them for their service ahead of time. Um, but again, I, I really want to thank the vestry very much for their deliberations in this matter, uh, as they've really talked over it, thought about it. And again, I want to say that if you have any other questions about this project, you can contact one of your, of your vestry members, and they can probably tell you more about it at that time. But again, we have a really creative vestry, I believe, that is on the edge, thinking about ways, again, to enhance our campus and also to enhance our church. And I'm really, really thankful for them. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Our prayer this morning begins on page 361. Amen. 
the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who in the first day of the week overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he gave thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new, and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, 
now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our civic Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ, our Passover, sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah! gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And I bless each and every one of you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks. Thanks.